So welcome, and thank you for taking the time to join us for the Trillion Insights Roadmap session at the uh, Trillion Expert Summit here. Um, my name is Arno van Eindelten, and I am the product manager for uh, Trillion Insights. And uh, today we'll uh, uh, address a few things. Um, as as Vanny mentioned already, uh, we're going to have a look at the, the roadmap. But uh, I also wanted to uh, just take you through the highlights of uh, Trillion Sites 9.5, which we released last year. Um, and um, just wanted to make sure that you are aware that if our, uh, you have any questions, then you can post them in the chat during this, this session. And uh, we can have a look at your questions uh, uh, at the end. And I'll try to uh, answer as many as I can. Let's continue with the Trillion Insights 9.5 highlights. So in Trillion Insights 9.5, we introduced a completely redesigned user interface in collaboration with existing customers, partners, uh, community IDs, uh, community contributions, and, and, and more. Um, so the focus for this first release uh, of the new experience space user interface is actually on editorial experience. So the day-to-day -day tasks that an editor needs to be able to complete. Uh, we spend a huge amount of time to set a new standard for usability here. Um, and also a lot of the UI extensions that we've developed uh, to overcome shortcomings uh, for CME um, have been implemented as a standard feature here in uh, Experience Space. Um, so we are very adamant to make uh, this, uh, you know, the usability of this interface uh, much better and, and um, yeah, just to uh, uh, give you more, more Productivity and, and and those kind of things with uh, the uh, addition of good uh, defaults here. Also, the training integration framework is something that was uh, uh, already released in 9.5, but this is a feature that unleashes your enterprise content that is uh, locked up in other repositories, right? So it standardizes the way um, the tra yeah training integrates with other technology tools in the customer's IT landscape. Uh, to help build smarter experiences across channels and touch points. Um, so information from systems such as uh, SharePoint, Vimeo, uh, a PIM or a DAM system, or any other external content repository can be exposed inside the Trudy Insights user interface uh, as if it was natively stored content. And you can apply metadata, uh, blueprinting, workflow, and any other unique Trudy and feature uh, and publish it as part of a page or other digital experience. So you can imagine how much easier this may it, yeah this makes it to tap into third-party repositories and publish that content in, into your sites. So very much related to the integration framework itself is the continuous expanding connector ecosystem. Uh, and as you can see, we have an exciting li exciting list of connectors uh, that are now available. Uh, so we have a primo for digital asset management, and soon also the primo marketing resource management functionality will become available. Uh, Salesforce CRM, which makes it possible to collect and access customer data to create personalized experience, customer experiences. Um, SAP Commerce Cloud uh, and Magento, which are both uh, commerce connectors um, that speed up online delivery uh, of blended content and commerce experiences. Uh, and then we have Contentful and Dropbox. And with those connectors, Trillion can uh, tap into the content management repositories to serve as a central content hub for all your disparate content uh, and enable uh, that content rather than uh, duplicate it. Access management uh, centralizes the configuration of authentication across all of Trillium. And this allows for a much smoother and safer experience for practitioners because it enables single sign-on, uh, optionally with multi-factor authentication uh, if the configured identity provider supports that. So the administration user interface allows you to configure external identity providers, such as Auth0, Ping Identity, uh, Microsoft Azure AD and, and basically supporting protocols including uh, SAML 2.0, OpenID Connect, uh, Windows Authentication, and LDAP. So Trillion also keeps another trail of changes uh, made to the identity provider settings and user profiles, so you can always see who has changed what and when. And to make headless content publishing even easier, Trillion Insights 9.5 redefines the way content is published from your content manager to your content delivery environments as well as how it can be queried from there. So new data pipeline, sorry, new data publishing capabilities allow you to define at the content le schema level, which fields need to be published into DXD, as well as which ones are searchable. 
And this is highly granular control over what data is transferred to DXD adds extra security to your environment. Content is published to DXD in uh, JSON format for easy, headless content consumption. And the new JSON publishing, uh, which is depicted in green there, runs in parallel with existing template or rendering uh, mechanisms to ensure backwards compatibility with existing uh, implementations. So with content delivery search, customers no longer need to build and implement their own search solutions for end users. And the functionality is optimized for the Trillion Sites da data model. Uh, and makes use of Elasticsearch, uh, which is the world leading and de facto standard search platform. Site search is one of the most used entry points for end users to quickly find the content they were looking for on a website. So effective site search means better usability and conversion is key for customers who want, uh, want to find what they're looking for easily. And are, that makes them more likely to make a purchase actually. All right. So that was it on looking uh, quickly looking back at the Trillion Insights 9.5 release. Um, I want to dive into uh, the Trillion Roadmap teams uh, now. And the first team is about driving customer success with AI for content. So if you've seen already Azad uh, talking a little bit about this, um, but I'll explain a little bit more and uh, also show you a video of uh, what, what we're developing and what we're releasing later this year. So in regards to letting end users search um, or reach their goals uh, quickly, we will focus on three main uh, features here. Um, the first one is dynamic search filters, also known as facets, which will allow end users to narrow down on search results and help them find the content they were looking for more easily. So search suggestions uh, quickly connect search terms, uh, which the end user entered, um, with relevant concepts that the content is classified with to further improve content findability. So in this example here, um, and Azad also mentioned this already, um, the search term is cough, and because that concept is related to lag and limb injuries, those search concepts show up as alternative um, IDs, basically, to search content for. And the last one in the list is about the ability to show related content when reading an article. Uh, the example shows an article about cough pain, while the tips for the next step, steps in the journey show related content based on the relationship of the concepts in the taxonomy. So it's important to realize with large content sets that manually creating links on pages is both laborious and error prone. So manually created links will point to stale content quickly. Uh, using properly classified content and the uh, taxonomy relationships between those concepts. We will make sure related content is being kept up to date, for instance, by automatically adding related content when new content is created. But where do you then start in making your content easier to find? So for all of this, it's important to semantically enrich your content with smart taxonomy in order for Tridian to act as the intelligent content platform here. So future proving your content and getting most the most out of it. Smart tagging will provide you productivity in in enhancements uh, for editors, and they can use the smart tagging recommendations to classify content quickly and accurately. So this functionality analyzes your content and suggests appropriate te taxonomy concepts to tag your content with, and it greatly improves the usability and accuracy and reduces the time spent on properly classifying content. So let's have a look at a demo created by Philippe uh, Cornil in which he will show the true value of these new features. Hello, my name is Philippe Conil. I'm a Trillion Solutions Consultant. And today I have the pleasure to present to you the upcoming Trillion Semantic AI capabilities and how these can help both your customers and employees to find more relevant content through easy to use, efficient search experiences. Semantic search takes user intent and concepts meaning into account, which leads to more efficient and relevant search results when compared to traditional keyword search. To illustrate this, I'm going to show you a quick customer journey and then how employees can leverage the same interface to find role-based or secured content through a web search experience. Please note that Trillion will provide an API-first semantic search set of capabilities supporting GraphQL, which gives you the flexibility to create engaging single-page applications, for example, built in React or Angular, but also you can build mobile apps or uh, chatbots or even voice assistant led search experiences using Trillion. So as a consumer, I'm going to browse this Acadian insurance website and start to learn about the different offerings and products of this company. 
So we have a, a home insurance product here, uh, car insurance, and then a business insurance offerings. But the company might have many more products and services to offer, which would take me a lot of time to browse through all this information on the site. So instead of doing that, I want to take immediate action and I'm going to open the search experience and see if I can find my content, uh, the content that is relevant to me a little bit faster by just typing a search. So if I search for a car, then I can see the related concepts are provided here uh, with auto. And we can see the, the matching label, the context as well, uh, where these concepts was, was found in the knowledge graph. And this gives us uh, meaningful results already or meaningful suggestions that I can pick. Uh, I could also run a full text search, but it's even faster to get to relevant results by selecting a, a concept there. If I search for, you know, get assistance or get a quote, similarly, I will find related concepts as well that are already classified within the knowledge graph. But today I want to um, create a, an insurance claim. So I'm going to search for a file claim. Here we have a related uh, topic or concept that I can pick. I could run again full text search or just pick the how to file a claim concept here and see the results that I'm going to find. So here we go, we have relevant results already, but these are about any type of insurance. So it's a little bit of a broad result set. I might have hundreds of, of results here that are not exactly relevant to uh, what I want. So today I want to file an, an, a car insurance claim. So I'm going to select auto in the insurance type so that I can narrow down the search uh, by selecting this particular facet. So this is very useful because then I can find exactly the content I'm looking for, which is the process to file an insurance claim for my car. But let's say I would be in a different situation where I need assistance and I need to, I want to know how to call the, the occasion company, then I can select the when to call concept, narrow it down again to the um, auto, and then based on what I want to do there, uh, whether I need immediate assistance or I just want the phone number, uh, I can narrow down again through facets, uh, precise my intent and the goal I have on the site here. Based on that information, I get really relevant content that is linked to the uh, concept that I was looking for initially. So here, what to do after an accident or roadside assistance might be very relevant in my situation um, where I, if I need immediate assistance, we can even showcase some of the content coming up from this result set as part of the search results. So I can already find relevant information without having to go into the detail page of that search result. So here I have the phone number information of the company. I can directly pick up my phone and call them. Um, so I'm quite happy with this result, but I can go ahead and open the detail page as well to see uh, more information about the content. And so let's look at that. So here, if I wanted to um, get a quote, for example, I would narrow it down through the facets uh, to get a quote. And then we can open the detail page about the car insurance. And here we have a get a quote widget at the top where I can finish my customer journey and take action by um, filling in the zip code information and start with the quote process. So that would end my journey. But uh, if I wanted to file a claim like earlier, then I can also look at the related topics and resources which are available thanks to the knowledge graph, thanks to the relationships between the concepts. Uh, we can see that the relevant tasks at that point for the user might be to indeed file a claim. So uh, I, I might want to look at a tutorial video to see how to create a car insurance claim. The employee search interface can be similar to the consumer experience because Trillion is your content and knowledge hub. Therefore, tagging your content with the appropriate audience visibility helps to provide a powerful, snappy, and role-based search experience so that both your customers and employees uh, achieve their tasks faster. Insurance companies need their employee to quickly look through large amounts of content in user guides, policies, and support procedures to answer to customer requests. So let's see how quickly an employee can search for internal as well as external facing content using Trident Semantic Search. As I can log in as Tom Brown, um, who's an uh, insurance agent, 
and I can see internal procedures and policies that I want to access here or I can just type a search. So we, we use the same search experience in this case, but it's role-based. So if I type uh, auto policy, I'm going to find different results than uh, if I was a consumer. And I could still enable access to the consumer content for the employees. That's also fine through role-based filters. As we see, we have an audience filter in the top left. And here I can narrow down through the facets again to find the information that I need. So when I find a topic that is of interest to me uh, as an insurance agent, I can go and find information about this content or again, showcase relevant content on the right hand side through the uh, concepts relationships that we define. So why does this go beyond keyword search? Instead of looking for exact term matches in the content, the meaning of each piece of content is captured through the semantic tagging allowing users to find more easily the content they're looking for. And this is thanks to the relationship defined between concepts and ontologies, which are connecting concepts into a knowledge graph. So how does that work in Tridian? So if we want to classify the content in Tridian, we can go into draft space, for example. And here we're working with a, a pretty large publication with many topics. You can bulk tag many topics all at once to save a lot of time with content classification while ensuring better findability of your content. But in this instance, we'll go ahead and select the particular topic we were looking at earlier. And then um, we can request smart tagging or AI suggestions for the classification of this content. So here I'll just hit suggest tags uh, to complete a potential manual classification that I had done earlier. And here we see the nice recommendation. So if you look at the content on the left-hand side, it relates nicely to the concepts that were found by AI and uh, provided to us. So we can refine those results, all those suggestions, and we can even find uh, manually additional uh, tags that we want to apply to the content. So it's very easy to use. We can type to filter out the external uh, taxonomy and apply certain tags. And then you can publish that content out to make those tags available to the digital experience delivery layer of Tridian and basically have this content uh, more easily findable uh, through your search experiences. So if we look at the thesaurus management layer uh, of Tridian, and that's where you would define your knowledge graph, so it's essentially the taxonomies. Both Tridian sites and docs are relying on standard taxonomies. Uh, for example, W3C scores, and so that tools and organizations can collaborate better and know exactly which industry uh, specific concept you're talking about in your content. For instance, many insurance companies are leveraging the Eurovog industry standard taxonomy, which we are also using in this demonstration. Polpali, of course, supports multilingual disorders, and we can define related labels and create relationships between concepts very easily in this interface. So by creating a relationship between the when to call and roadside assistance concepts, this is how we make the content more findable and how we make it show up naturally in the relevant search scenarios. Similarly, as we've seen in DraftSpace subject matter expert interface, Trillion Sites editors can use smart tagging recommendations to classify content quickly and accurately. You can ask for smart tagging recommendations following an update of the knowledge graph because this is evolving all the time when new content gets created or new concepts get defined. To summarize, um, semantic search is a great addition to treating content and knowledge hub. It's the foundation to deliver more engaging experiences through advanced personalization, avoid duplication of work for content editors, and it will enable future analytics reporting on content reuse as well. All right, so it was great to see that demo. Um, yeah, let's go and continue with the uh, presentation. So we have uh, the next theme, which is making authors and editors more productive. So let's go and have a look at the slides, um, and then we'll take a Q&A at the very end. All right. So the next theme, um, as I said, is making authors and editors more productive. The, uh, so based on customer feedback, we've added improvements. Uh, many improvements actually, and uh, some of them are uh, are actually 
uh, shown here. So there's quick create interactions for uh, for different uh, organizational items like folder and structure group. Um, we have added the thumbnail view in the item selector, uh, which is also available for external content. So ECL uh, support is there too. And um, the ability for protectionists to actually open items in a new tab. And that's useful for if you want to uh, edit content or view content uh, next, you know, side to side and those kind of things. All right. So this is uh, based on customer feedback. Then we're also uh, committed to bringing more of the functionality you are relying on in the uh, currently called classic UI uh, to experience space. View on site is an example for that. Um, that's uh, to quickly preview a page or component on a staging or a live site. Uh, and multi uh, select support in item uh, select dialogues and more are uh, being added as well. So, accessibility of applications is a hot topic these days. And we do um, see a more uh, customer interest actually in accessibility in relation with Trillion 2. Um, so we're therefore working hard to improve the accessibility of our experience based user interface. And since taxonomies are uh, important for our semantic AI capabilities, we'll make sure to get keyword and category editor support in Tree Insights 962. So next to that, we are also adding editorial search functionality and uh, add bundle support in experience space. And last not, but not least, we're making the first steps to add translation support uh, in 9.6, and you see a quick preview of that uh, here on the on the screen. So the third theme is about our uh, expanding uh, connector ecosystem. So additional connectors and functionality uh, using the integrate trading integration framework uh, includes actually uh, marketing resource management with our Primo MRM connector, uh, digital quality management. Uh, with site improve to measure and improve uh, search engine optimization, uh, accessibility, and content performance. Uh, with regards to marketing automation, um, we're working on a Marketo and Salesforce marketing cloud connector. And for online video platforms, um, there is a Brightcove uh, connector to uh, support with uh, uh, yeah the the being able to actually uh, use. Uh, videos like uh, like you were using it from a, a digital asset management system. Uh, and for taxonomy, um, there's a pool party taxonomy management support, uh, which includes the smart tagging, the facet of search and the search suggestions capabilities that we've just uh, seen in the video as well. Then there's a theme keeping track of uh, entitlements. And uh, the aim for an updated entitlement capability is to improve the provisioning experience for the customers on the one hand um, and enable more flexible license models in the future on the other hand. So with regards to the aspect of provisioning, um, this will remove the need for manual deployment of licenses. So there's no need anymore to copy files to multiple machines uh, manually. And this greatly improves the flexibility in deployment as it will support deployment setups with containerization as well. And for ultimate flexibility, we're looking at ways to enable customers to scale up and down uh, more on demand. So for instance, when a customer experiences peak low during a campaign, uh, for instance, a Black Friday uh, campaign or something like that, and they need additional pro processing capacity, uh, then that's something that we're looking to add in the future as well. Um, so a flexible license model could be then uh, a pay-as-you-go uh, model. Uh, so you pay for what you consume. Uh, where you don't need to buy licenses for peak load upfront, but only pay for what you use. So on the theme of um, uh, updating key architecture, this is a, a bucket of a lot of architectural improvements um, that we are uh, working on uh, for uh, for uh, this release and others. And it includes, um, you know, headless content management improvements as well. So with the new data publishing capability, the ability to just publish components or folders in which the components are stored uh, becomes more important. And this will be possible in 9.6. So along with the ability to mark a folder as non-publishable. So similar to what we're doing to structure groups and pages in those structure groups. Um, and this, in the end, uh, provides more granular control over large item sets uh, to be published. And it prevents content that is marked as archived to be accidentally published. So semantic content models were introduced in Tree Insights 9.5, uh, 
and um, in there it was a manual configuration option. So the ability to specify what the content represents, uh, an article, for example, or a blog or a product, instead of a trillion specific item type, so it adds a page or a component presentation, um, and then use that in the GraphQL API. Uh, to build experiences that removes the need for application developers to actually know Tridian or its domain model. model right? So they only have to know about what is the content uh, representing that I'm consuming. So in 9.6, we will expand that capability by automatically mapping schemas uh, defined uh, to content models representing the content in a GraphQL API. So this, re this removes the need to, uh, yeah, to manually configure and um, those those uh, content models and restart services. So to make this all more usable for application developers, there will be an extended set of root GraphQL queries available as well. And yeah, I've seen some um, initial uh, demonstrations of this capability, and it's truly uh, it's truly. Um, yeah, change, uh, changing actually the, the world that uh, we're used to, uh, you know, consuming content for trillion sites. So this is very promising actually to uh, to have a look at, and I'm, I definitely uh, advise you to keep a track of uh, upcoming webinars uh, in the next couple of months, uh, uh, closer to the release. So with 9.6, we will have an initial release of the Core Surface REST Open API, and this has been a long-standing request uh, in our community IDs uh, as well. Uh, basically, this marks the first step towards standardization on .NET Standard and .NET Core, and it will enable us to containerize content manager services in the future as well. So in addition to the web user interfaces and the Core Surface REST Open API that currently support single sign-on, Additional client applications will get, get support for this too. Um, so we're talking about Content Porter, Template Builder, Visual Workflow Designer, uh, and the WCF Core Servers. Um, so this will all be supporting SSO. And then in this overview, you can see what we're actually planning, uh, you know, when we're planning the release of 3D Insights 9.6, and that's in uh, Q4 uh, 2021. Uh, connectors will be released out of band of the 3D Insights release, so they will be made available throughout the year. And you can see that for the first half year, we've already been uh, working on the site improve Brightcover Marketo connectors. The site improve one is available, and Brightcover Marketo will become available soon as well. So 3D Insights 10 is planned for 2022, and it will include targeted content recommendations in relation to the semantic AI theme. And for experience-based functionality, we're planning for workflow, uh, full translation management capability, and uh, the poss possibly also content modeling and in context editing. Uh, so, with the regards to the architecture theme, the course of addressed open API uh, full feature parity um, with the classic WCF core service is planned uh, for sites 10 as well. And uh, for entitlements, the agile licenses models is also something that uh, will come later uh, in, in trading sites 10 and onwards. So before we close off uh, the session with Q&A, uh, I wanted to point out that earlier this year, we have released a brand new e-learning, uh, which is the 3D Insights Fundamentals Training. Um, it's completely free to take the course, and you only need an RDBS uh, university account, and uh, then you can enroll for the early e-learning. So do go to the RDBS university today to create your account, uh, if you don't already have one. <laughs> and enroll to the Tree Insights Fundamentals e-learning course for free. And uh, I think we have time for some Q&A, so uh, we can take your questions now. Hey, thanks, Arnold, it's a great presentation. And uh, good to see that what's coming up in the future. Um, I, I see that there's a couple of questions uh, came in. Uh, so one of the question is that uh, basically we spoke about the different connectors. Um, so the question is that, is this connectors is available or they're part of the product itself or the customer need to pay for it to get those uh, connectors? So for yeah, example, that's... like the pool party or any other connectors, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. And um, so we have uh, connectors that are not necessarily part of the release. We can actually release them 
separate from the Tridian product uh, because we have standardized on the Tridian integration framework, which has been released since uh, Tridian Sites 9.1. So um, the connectors um, that we're releasing will be working on Tridian Sites 9.1 and upwards, right? So 9.1, 9.5, and the upcoming 9.6, and later on Sites 10 as well for next year. The um, There are a couple of connectors, uh, like the Site Improve one, uh, that um, are available for free. So if you have a Site Improve uh, subscription, you can start using the connector for free. Um, others, um, they will come at a, at a additional cost. Um, and the, the one that you just mentioned uh, for pool party, uh, we won't be releasing the pool party connectors separately, but it will be part of um, you know the semantic AI features uh, that we will that we will be releasing with uh, both Trillion Sites 9.6 as well as the upcoming Trillion Docs release later in Q4 as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, Arno. There's another question came in, like, I think um, this is an interesting one. Um, a web forms, it was a kind of like old uh, and we used to have it. So someone asking about, like, is there any option that to bring the web forms or option to create a web forms itself in the product? Yeah. Well, another good question. Um, so what we've seen um, is that for very simple uh, forms, we can we can definitely model, um, you know, uh, so, so you can model something with 3DN and and, uh, and an integration, for instance, with a CRM or an ERP system, right? So we've seen um, actually things in our demo as well where um, it's possible to uh, to start using the uh, CRM, uh, so Salesforce, for instance, connector. Uh, to uh, to start, um, you know, taking in uh, data from uh, a form that you create on the uh, on the page, but for a lot of cases, use cases, it's actually better uh, not to use Trillion to to manage those forms. Um, and I would definitely uh, advise you to to you know take on uh, some information from the uh, from the uh, the team that's uh, you know so the the, the sales pre sales consultant team. Um, to look at what the rec recommendations there are, uh, because that's uh, there's there's a couple of people that are, you know, that have been looking into this. Uh, for simple things, like I said, you can still do uh, something directly with the connector. Uh, for more advanced forms, um, yeah, it becomes a little bit tedious to do that through 3D, and so there, there are better solutions for that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I think that's a good idea that we see in this question a number of times, how we can create a web forms uh, in the Brilliant, but thank you for that. Um, yeah, sure. There's one more, uh, someone asking about like, is it possible to make the core service as a restful service instead of an SOAP service? Is there any well, plans for that or, yeah. Well, this is exactly uh, what I just uh, talked about earlier in the presentation. So we have the core service REST API that we're uh, announcing for uh, Trinity Sites 9.6. So it's already there in 9.5 uh, as a non-public API because the uh, we, we are still working to make sure that we can properly, um, you know, support this for, for customizations and customer implementations as well. Uh, so, the, the, so the sole user of, of it in 9.5 is actually the experience-based user interface. But in 9.6, we will make it, um, you know, we will make an initial version of it public, right? So what happens there is that we'll have a proper, API, proper open API um, uh, supported, um, uh, yeah, REST API available for you to build your customizations on top of and, and, and your automation. Um, so yes, it will be the initial release of it, uh, the public release of it will be in 9.6 later this year. And uh, like I mentioned in the in the other slide, um, we're, we're aiming for full feature parity with the WCF core servers in Site Stand next year. Great, thank you. Thank you, Arno, for that. Um, I think there's a couple of more questions in the in the chat. Um, I'm sure that I think we will take one more um, probably then other one you can uh, answer them directly on the chat box. Uh, um, there's one question coming up like site improve is a part of the product or do we need to configure it or any separate license for the same? Yeah, for a lot of um, connectors, you know, it's important that you um, you're either using this product already, or you can you can 
contact us and we can set you up uh, with a subscription or, or anything like that. Uh, but in a lot of cases, indeed, we're, we're talking about, you know, a third party uh, vendor that we partnered up with, in this case, Site Improve, um, that provides uh, functionality that we can uh, leverage basically in Trillion, right? So the connector will allow you to, to start using all of that, uh, that, that cool stuff basically that it brings, you know, all of the digital quality, quality management uh, capabilities of Site Improve in this particular uh, example. Um, but yeah, you'll have to you'll have to have that third party uh, product uh, as well, of course. So so what we're aiming for in general uh, is, is you know we're definitely if we're talking about uh, you know CRM or e-commerce or any other type of uh, integration, we're not we're not saying well this is the one system that you should use because it's the best or or it it will fit everyone's need. That that's typically never the case, right? Um, because we we have a best of breed strategy. We want to make sure that all of our connectors, um, you know, that our product basically supports all of the connectors that we need to support uh, so that we can, you know, we can have a connector to the perfect system that works for you, right? And in this case, Site Improve is something that uh, has been on, on many customers' requests. So yeah, definitely uh, an interesting addition to, uh, to our list of connectors there. Great, great. Um, thank you, Arno. I think uh, we have one more question in the group. Probably you can pick that up uh, uh, offline and uh, you can answer it. And I think there's one question, probably most of them has it like a, in the experience space moving forward in the 9.6, uh, are we allowing to go have a GUI extensions, like extending the interface uh, in the 9.6 or when, when 9.6 is or not a 9.6, but in the experience space, is it possible to create the extensions for the interface itself? Yeah. No, I, I get the question. Yeah, no, this is definitely uh, <laughs> definitely a very good question indeed. I didn't touch upon it in the in the presentation. Um, so what we are aiming to do in 9.6 specifically are adding a couple of things that, you know, we see uh, customers creating extensions for, um, you know, typically for, for yeah, you know, currently with the CME. Right. One one example, for instance, is uh, an extension to to add some data uh, points to uh, to information. You know, when you want to uh, when you want to query data from uh, from the content manager, um, some data is being you know enriched there, and then there's another extension in the UI to actually show that data in a column or something like that in the user interface. This is actually something that we we are uh, planning to include as a as a default. Um, uh, you know, uh, capability in 9.6. So what we're doing is in 9.6, we're, we're already allowing you to to add data if you need it. But you know, we're we're basically already fetching way more data than we than we need to. Um, then we then we're definitely showing at least. Let me put it that way, um, which allows you to basically uh, configure in your user interface. So using a, a little call guide uh, icon there, you can configure which columns you want to see and which ones you don't. Right, so you have much more flexibility out of the box over, over that kind of data, and and that uh, should already remove uh, a lot of and the need for a lot of extensions. Uh, obviously, there's there's many more places where people would like to extend the product, uh, and I realize that, and we're working on you know uh, user research and, and and we're taking in feedback uh, today um, to plan for that in size ten. So the 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 you know the areas that we uh, will allow you to extend uh, experience space. Will be uh, will be much more clear when we uh, start the you know the more detailed planning for Dream Science Ten. Sure, that's definitely answers a lot of questions because, um, yeah, the people would have those having the extensions in the previous versions, and what's yeah. the plan for the in the future release? So I think that's a great answer. Yeah, yeah, I think I think. I think the most important thing here is for us to understand why do you have the extension in the first place, right? Because yep. a lot of times um, having an extension in CME doesn't mean you need to still have it in experience space, right? And, yep. and if we can if we can prevent you from needing to build an extension, I think that's an even better outcome than just allowing you to you know extend the product in it whichever way you want. Um, but that's uh, yeah, that's something that we'll that we'll definitely looking for for more input for. So if you have any great ideas on on you know where you would need extensibility, for instance, in experience space, there's uh, 
uh, definitely place uh, for you on the community. So go to community.sdl.com and add your community ID there, and we'll take uh, that into account when planning for Trim Sites 10. Yep, that's good. Even I myself working with the customers where there's a lot of extensions, GUI extension being built in the previous versions and also trying to explain them that, okay, the same feature can be achieved in the experience space, how you can get the same outcome, what you built it. And uh, But there are some of certain things which is specific to that customer or specific to that the requirement. They would like to have that uh, small yeah, button to be created or something like that so definitely i will i have a few ideas i will bring it up to you guys as well to get to very see good. that how we can yeah. It. yeah looking forward to yeah. that thank you sure thank you very much arno i think um, um we've thank done with the questions for now but uh, yeah thank you very much for your presentation and great all insights right. of the, the what coming up yeah. all right enjoy the rest of the uh, sessions today sure thank you thank you all right bye bye